Hello everybody, it's Fu here, and today I want to do a deep dive into Barraskewda. You get it? Deep dive? Because fish? This Pokemon has had a really interesting competitive journey, ricocheting from really high tiers to mediocre tiers, and it actually got banned part way through, which is usually the death knell for a Pokemon. If it gets banned, then you just don't see it used very much at all. But thanks to a lot of reshuffling around the DLCs, Barraskewda actually has come out of this looking really good, and I can't wait to take you through this whole journey today. So let's start at the beginning. It's November 2019, Sword and Shield have just been released, and everyone's looking at the newly released Pokemon, and Barraskewda is really catching a lot of attention. It has a blisteringly fast base 136 speed stat, which is faster than the vast majority of Pokemon, and it also has an incredibly high attack stat, making it look like a very effective revenge killer, potentially a sweeper, just doing a ton of damage before the opponent can attack because it's so fast. It's the definition of a glass cannon, it has basically no bulk to speak of whatsoever, but that's kind of okay if you can KO the opposing Pokemon before it gets to attack you. In terms of its abilities, it had Propeller Tail, which is kind of interesting. It allows you to ignore redirection, which is mainly for doubles, so you don't get redirected with Follow Me or Rage Powder, for example. And it definitely saw that ability being put to use in certain VGC metas, but in singles, that doesn't really do anything, so really the only ability that you'd ever see it run in singles is Swift Swim, which is really great because it doubles Barraskewda's speed in rain. It's already so fast, so it becomes impossible for you to outspeed this Barraskewda and it will just do immense damage with rain boosted stab water type moves. It also has a plethora of coverage moves, so it's obviously got its water stabs in liquidation and also priority aqua jet, which is really nice. But close combat is a fantastic addition to its moveset, definitely being able to deal with steel types a little bit better, as well as things like crunch, drill run, and even bounce can be useful for a reason I'll talk about in a second. So when we look at the singles meta evolving, initially Dynamax was allowed and Barraskewda is a potent Dynamax Sweeper. It's able to set up its own rain with very powerful Max Geysers, which then get even more powerful with the rain boost. It gets the speed boost from Swift Swim, and so it's a real self-starter that can do a ton of damage and is very hard for the opponent to deal with. Not only that, its close combat turns into Max Knuckle, which boosts its attack power even further, and it also has access to that bounce I mentioned before, which can turn into Max Airstream. That's fantastic because it boosts its speed even more. You don't even need to set up rain if you want to go for max airstreams instead, and you can deal with some grass types that you might otherwise struggle with. For all these reasons, Barraskewda was pretty terrifying in the initial Sword and Shield meta, and so when the Smogon tiering system debuted, Barraskewda was firmly in the overused tier, which is the highest tier in Smogon. So that's a pretty great start for Barraskewda. You can't deny that starting out in OU is really, really good. However, in December 2019, Dynamax was controversially banned by Smogon. If you're interested in finding out more about that, let me know in the comment section below because I might do a video on it in the future. Without the option of Dynamaxing, Barraskewda wasn't so much a self-starter. It didn't really have ways to boost its own attack power and it didn't have that max geyser option to set up its own reign. It was kind of more reliant on support for all of that. And bear in mind that at this time, we had one of the most broken Pokemon of this generation in the OU tier in Dracovish, which definitely was a self-starter. You just need to click Vicious Rend and it's gonna do a ton of damage. The only thing you have to worry about is outspeeding the opponent. If you put on a Choice Scarf, then that's probably gonna be fine. Or you can just throw around a few Thunder Waves and Dracovish will probably be able to sweep. It will definitely break through any slower walls, which Barraskewda wasn't quite so good at. Because Barraskewda faced stiff competition from other powerful water types, it actually dropped to the UU tier in the January 2020 tier updates. UU is a tier below OU, so it was only a minor drop, but this tier was only newly released. There weren't any below that at this stage, so it remained to be seen if Barraskewda would drop any further. Barraskewda initially did pretty well in UU. Its high base speed, access to priority, and decent coverage meant that it was a relatively good revenge killer. But as the tier settled out, Milotic and Vaporeon became staples 
staples of the tier, which could take on its water type stab moves or its coverage moves pretty well, and both of them have relatively reliable recovery, so they could consistently check Barraskuda. And also there are quite a lot of ch fast choice scarf users in the tier that would outspeed Barraskuda. And the most unfortunate thing for Barraskuda is that it's very good in the rain, but the premier rain setter at the time was Pelipper. There weren't any other Pokemon with the drizzle ability that could automatically set rain, and Pelipper had remained in the overused tier, so it couldn't be used in underused. So Barraskuda didn't have the support it needed to be an amazing Swift Swim Pokemon in UU. Because of these other defensive water types, after a couple of months, Barraskuda just wasn't cutting it in UU and it dropped down to the tier below, which was RU. And here it was pretty fantastic. It outsped basically everything in the tier, even with an adamant nature which boosts its attack instead of its speed, so it could do even more damage. It was an amazing revenge killer, it could break apart teams, but initially it was quite handily checked by a tier staple in Mantine. So it was very good in the tier, but it was kind of balanced. However, fast forward a couple of months to May 2020, and Mantan actually rose in usage. It went up to the underused tier, leaving Barraskuda in this tier with very few good alternative checks. It was wreaking absolute havoc. Its best switch-ins were things like a defensive Vile Plume, but Barraskuda can have Psychic Fangs, which is super effective. So you can deal with Vile Plume pretty well if you predict it right. And then there was also Jellicent, which has water absorbed, so it can be immune to its water type attacks. But Barraskuda learns Crunch, and that's super effective, so you can take care of the Jellicents too if you get your prediction right. Basically, Barraskuda had all the tools it needed to break apart entire teams, and there were very few good checks. These stormy waters came to a head when the RU Council voted on whether to ban Barraskuda from the RU tier, and with a very close vote, 6 out of 10 of the RU Council thought that Barraskuda should be banned. So Barraskuda was banned from the RU tier. Being banned from any tier is a pretty good achievement, but RU is kind of a mediocre tier, so it's not like it was banned to Ubers from OU. But still, bans are a big deal for Pokemon because this is a Pokemon that isn't used enough in the tiers above, because it maybe isn't quite good enough or the checks in the other tiers are too good, but in the RU tier it's too good and has been banned. That normally means that a Pokemon just doesn't see any usage at all, and it's a really sad state of affairs. But fortunately for Barraskuda, chaos was coming, which would shake up the entire game, and Barraskuda was definitely going to capitalize on that. This is when the Isle of Armor DLC dropped, and with it came the reintroduction of a ton of old Pokemon that weren't in the base sword and shield games. Thank you, Dexit along with a few new Pokemon and also, very crucially, some move tutors. The most relevant one of these move tutors was Flip Turn, which is a base 60 power water type move that switches you out when you use it. This is so fantastic for Barraskuda. Usually, a lot of Barraskuda ran choice banded sets, which, while they were very powerful and could break apart Pokemon, they also left Barraskuda very vulnerable. It would be stuck on the field, locked into a move, with its very low bulk, the opponent could definitely capitalize on that. Flip Turn, on the other hand, allows you to get really nice damage onto the opponent if you have a choice banded Barraskuda with Stab Flip Turn. It's going to do a lot, but it also switches Barraskuda out so that you don't then have to risk Barraskuda taking any attacks. So this was really fantastic for Barraskuda. It was one of the fastest and most powerful to learn the move as well, so it definitely got a lot of attention. At the time of the Isle of Armor DLC release, a number of changes happened in the tiering system too. Two very notable changes happened. One, Pelipper actually dropped in usage and fell from OU to UU. This was mainly because while Dracovish was in OU, every team had to have an amazing water type check. Seismitoad, for example, was on a quarter of teams, so that is pretty crazy. And there were a, a lot of other water immunities that were used at the time just because Dracovish was such a menace. That meant that rain teams were definitely not as good, and Pelipper's usage dropped, and it fell into the UU tier, but UU quickly banned Drizzle. So, despite Pelipper falling, which is one of the best support Pokemon for Barraskuda, you couldn't use them together effectively in the UU tier because 
Pelipper's Drizzle was banned, so the whole purpose of using it with Barracuda was gone. But what also happened was in the OU tier, Dracovish was banned! So OU was going to have this whole reformation because all of these water type checks weren't needed as crucially anymore because Dracovish was gone. So that's going to really affect the tiering post Isle of Armour DLC. It was a massive change. So in the July 2020 usage statistics, which is the first one after the Isle of Armour DLC, we do see a change for Barracuda. It actually raise, rises to the UU tier. It doesn't quite make it to OU here, but it does go to UU. It obviously got a lot of attention, though you can't use it with a Drizzle user because Drizzle's banned, despite Politoed also being reintroduced. Simply adding flip turn meant that a lot of people wanted to try it out and see what it could do and it did rise to the UU tier. This again was short lived. The Isle of Armour DLC had also brought in Amoongus and Tangrowth, two extremely bulky regenerator grass types that could take on Barracuda's water type hits all day. So that was kind of a bad deal for Barracuda and they both ended up in UU. So it was never gonna stay very long in UU when those things are kind of the meta there. So it dropped down to RU again and here actually it was no longer banned. It was unbanned from the RU tier and you could use it just because of the other things that had ended up in the tier. For example, Gastrodon and Seismitoad were pretty common at the time, which are very good checks to Barracuda. So again, Barrascuda was kind of balanced in the RU tier and you saw it used pretty frequently. But at the end of 2020, a really interesting thing happened. We get into an era of Barrascuda leapfrogging between tiers and it's really crazy how this happens. So in December 2020, Barrascuda rises all the way from RU to OU. It leapfrogs UU, which is pretty crazy. And this is all to do with the popularity of rain teams. If Pelipper is going to be popular, then Barrascuda is going to be picked up in the OU tier. And that's very specifically because it matches up super well against some of the staple OU Pokemon that usually are good enough water type checks. Things like Ferrothorn and Toxapex are used all the time in OU and Barrascuda can threaten them with pinpoint precision, depending on what moves you have in your set. A choice banded close combat from Barrascuda does a ton of damage to Ferrothorn, and it can also run Psychic Fangs to damage Toxapex. Its raw damage from rain boosted, stab boosted water type moves can deal with most other things, and even Tappy Finny, despite not having a great coverage move for it, Barrascuda can take down over time because Tappy Finny does not have reliable recovery. So in OU, Barrascuda is kind of the premier Swift Swim Sweeper. If you want something to take on other offensive teams, Barrascuda will dismantle these in the rain. The issue for Barrascuda is that it really needs that rain support and it needs rain to be good in the OU tier. And that turned out not to be super consistent. So it only stayed OU for a couple of months before dropping back down all the way to RU. And it keeps leapfrogging UU in these moves. Now, the reason why it dropped in April 2021 was because rain was just not cutting it at the time. There were a load of other weather teams being used. Sand saw an increase in usage, especially with Hippowdon increasing in usage at the time. We also saw some sun teams with Torkoal being used a bit more. And then we also saw some hail teams. I previously did a video about Arctazol, which is a super good hail sweeper and we saw a rise in the usage of those. And with all these other weather teams going around, rain teams do struggle a bit more. The other issue for rain teams may well have been the rise in usage of Curum. This kind of tracks quite well with the drop in usage of rain. Curum was a problem for rain teams because Pelipper was relatively passive against it. And if Curum got in freely against Pelipper, it could then spam basically any of its moves, but mainly Freeze Dry or Draco Meteor, and, and Rain Teams just didn't have an answer for that, really. It was too powerful, and being an offensive playstyle, Rain really struggled against that. So it's a combination of these other weather teams and rise in usage of Curum that meant that Pelipper and Rain in general just wasn't used so much. Pelipper dropped down to UU, but Barrascuda dropped all the way back down to RU because of this change. And it's really interesting to see how Barrascuda leapfrogs the UU tier. The reason why it just never gets picked up in UU is because the staples in that tier 
are Amoongus and Tangrowth, as well as some really strong, bulky waters. It all adds up to Barracuda not being the premier rain attacker here. Keldeo sees a lot more usage as a rain Pokemon because Choice Specs Hydro Pumps are just kind of a bit more powerful than Barracuda and it can take on some of the Pokemon there a bit better. So for example, Tangrowth does not take on Choice Specs Hydro Pumps as well as it can take on the liquidations that come out of Barracuda. In the RU tier at the time, Barracuda did actually have access to Drizzle support since it was unbanned and Politoed could actually support Barracuda. The issue with Politoed is that it's not so good as Pelipper. It's a lot more passive, a lot more things can kind of take advantage of it. Barracuda Rain, though was it was very strong, it did mean that you were playing at a little bit of a handicap because Politoed just isn't such a good Pokemon. Then at the end of 2021, we see another Leapfrog. Rain usage rises again, and we see Barracuda and Pelipper both make their way back up to the OU tier, where they have remained until this day. Kurum was banned at the end of 2021, so that definitely helps rain usage. It will definitely stay a bit higher because of that change. But it really is just metagame shifts and some things that maybe take on rain a bit better may become popular in the future and we might see Pelipper and Barracuda struggle a bit more and they might drop down again. So that is why Barracuda keeps flip-flopping like the fish it is between these two tiers. And I just love that. I think it's so on brand for this Pokemon. So that's the analysis of Barracuda. I love this Pokemon and I hope to see it thrive in the OU tier but it's also great when it's a big fish in a little pond in the RU tier because it does wreak havoc there too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more content. If you have any ideas about other Pokemon that I could analyze, please let me know in the comment section below because I really like making these videos, these very kind of analytical looks at which Pokemon are popular, which Pokemon are not so popular are very interesting to me. All that's left to be said is I've been Foo, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.